Antonio, a short film by Emily Cox. Exterior, Edward's house, day. The rumble of a car engine stopping. The clunk of a door opening. A jangle of keys. A shiny black shoe steps out of a car before the door closes again. We pull back to reveal an ordinary middle-class detached house. Four bedrooms, two cars. A neat garden. A man in a business suit walks up to the front door. He is carrying a white box. A brown work bag slung over his shoulder. This is Harry, 45. Interior, hallway, day. Harry steps through the front door and slips off his shoes. He discards his bag, but not the white box. Hello. Hi, guys. Interior, kitchen, day. A middle-aged woman wearing a floral dress turns from the list she is writing and reaches over to put the kettle on. This is Claire, 43. Harry enters. Hi, love. They kiss. How was work? Oh, fine. Not bad, actually. Harry takes off his coat and puts it over the kitchen chair, propping his umbrella by the door. Yeah? What's in the box? Ah, I was just about to show you. Are the kids in? Uh, yeah. Kids, come here. Interior, hallway, day. Some banging from upstairs, a rumble, before two children thunder down the stairs and burst into the kitchen. Interior, kitchen, day. Ella, six, and Matthew, eight. A meow as the family cat, Ginger, rubs against their legs. Harry begins opening the box. Ooh, what's this? Is it a new phone? Claire tuts. Gosh, we already spoil the kids, darling. No, no, it's not a present for them. It's a present for all of us. Claire raises her eyebrows. It's this new voice-controlled personal assistant thing called Antonio. You know, like you've seen in the adverts. Mm. Cool. Is this the one that you can talk to? Harry turns the box over in his hand and reads the back. Yeah, you, you can ask it questions, check the weather, order shopping, control lights and doors. I, I think he'll even read you bedtime stories if you want. I thought it might help a bit of organisation. It does calendar stuff. I suppose. Harry opens the box and breaks through the packaging to reveal a small black hexagon. He presses a button and a blue light pulses through a transparent panel at the front. The children move closer, fascinated. So it's like a robot? Yeah. Close, as he presses the on button. We linger on it for a little too long before a startup noise breaks the silence. Hello. I'm your new personal assistant, Antonio. Nice to meet you. Wow. How do you ask it things? You have to call its name, Antonio. Hello. How can I help you? Where does the tooth fairy live? Matthew rolls his eyes. The family wait anxiously. Beat. Sorry, I don't understand the question. He's a bit stupid. I thought robots were supposed to know everything. Don't call him stupid. Well, I mean, don't worry, Ella. Robots are a bit stupid. He won't know about things like that. They're very different to people. They don't have feelings or anything. Close on Antonio, sitting silently in the palm of Harry's hand. His light starts to pulse just a little more rapidly. Closer now. Ominous. Something's wrong. He flashes red briefly before switching back to blue. The Edwards family continue talking and laughing, oblivious. Exterior, suburban street, day. The house, still. A new day. The tweeting of birds. The rattle of the road in the distance. Interior, kitchen, dawn. Harry enters the kitchen and grabs a croissant from the cupboard. He glances outside while checking his bag. He picks up his coat and umbrella before remembering Antonio, sitting on the kitchen counter. Antonio, what will the weather be like today? Let me have a look. The weather will be sunny with temperatures of 16 degrees in Bournemouth. Ah, well in that case... He abandons his coat and umbrella by the kitchen door and leaves. Interior, hallway, day. The door shuts from outside as Harry leaves. Interior, hallway, day. Claire comes downstairs with the children and starts putting on their coats ready for school. She freezes. Oh, God, I never got the desserts. 
Antonio, can you order six chocolate puddings without nuts from the supermarket to be delivered today, please? Desserts have been ordered to be delivered at 4 p.m. today. Oh, but those ones are disgusting. They're not disgusting, thank you. And anyway, they're not for you. They're for my dinner party later. Karen's allergic. They exit via the front door. The house is silent. Interior, kitchen, day. Close once again on Antonio. Beat. All of a sudden, he comes to life. There's a whir as his light flashes. He makes excited robotic sounds before scooting around the kitchen counter excitedly. The family cat, Ginger, stands below watching. She eyes him up suspiciously, confused. Antonio makes a ting sound as he turns and spots an open packet of chocolate bites on the counter beside him. He turns to the biscuits and then back to Ginger. Ginger meows. Antonio moves forward and pushes the chocolate from the counter and onto the floor. Ginger laps them up eagerly before stopping suddenly. She meows again, differently this time, before rushing towards the cat flap, but... There's a locking sound. Ginger looks up at Antonio, who whizzes back and forwards on the counter in excitement. Ginger is sick all over the floor. Exterior, park, day. Harry rushes along the street, pushing through the crowds and checking his watch, late. At that moment, thunder cracks above him and the heavens open. He raises his arms in disbelief. Oh, what the... I thought... Interior, meeting room, council office, day. Harry tries to sneak into the meeting as quietly as he can, but he's not quiet enough. The door creaks and everyone turns around to look at him, late and soaked. His boss, Graham, shakes his head. Harry, how nice of you to join us. I must say, Graham, it does surprise me that we're entrusting our money to someone who doesn't possess the foresight to remember a coat. Everyone laughs nervously, sympathetic smiles. Harry grimaces. Interior, kitchen, evening. Claire and the children arrive home. There's cat excrement and sick all over the kitchen floor. Oh, for God's sake, Ginger, not now. I've got people coming over. Children, don't step in it. Don't step in it. Go upstairs. The children leave the room. Thumping can be heard as they go up the stairs. Right, party time. Montage begins. Claire looking disgusted as she clears away the cat sick. A time lapse of the kitchen clock spinning. Claire getting a food delivery. Claire cooking and setting out the table, polishing glasses, putting out cutlery. Claire putting on makeup. The clock again, this time settling on seven. The doorbell rings. Claire rushing towards the door, welcoming guests, laughing, putting away coats. Montage ends. Interior, kitchen, night. Claire is finishing preparing food when the children come downstairs, dressed in pyjamas now, tired. Mummy, can you put one of the stories on the tablet, please? Can't sleep. Yeah, and she keeps wriggling. Um, ugh, I'm a bit busy at the moment, darling. Oh, hang on. Antonia can read you one. Take him up with you. She picks him up and thrusts him at them. They leave the room. Interior, dining room, night. Six adults sit around the dinner table, happily tucking into their desserts and chatting until a horrible strangled sound emerges from Karen, 35. <coughs> she coughs, then gasps, grasping for air. What's the matter, Karen? The food's not that bad, I hope. Nuts! What? Nuts! Interior, children's bedroom, night. Both children are tucked up in bed with Antonio on the dresser between them. Antonio, can you read us a famous five story from YouTube? Antonio flashes blue. Playing top five true paranormal horror stories with audio and picture proof. The children exchange looks, terrified. Interior, dining room, night. Everyone panics as Karen very quickly goes red in the face. She clasps her neck, choking. Everyone stares at each other in shock. Helen, 28, is next to her, trying to help. How has this happened? Interior, children's bedroom, evening. And then the man laughed as he killed her. He turned and simply said, Boo. 
Antonio starts laughing. Aha! 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 The children both jolt upright and look at each other, screaming at the top of their lungs. Ah! Matthew grabs Antonio and they both thunder down the stairs. Interior, hallway, night. Mummy, there's something wrong with him! Claire rushes out into the hallway. What? What's happened? What's going on? Interior, dining room, night. Karen is still gasping and heaving. Everyone panics around her. (gasps) Harry enters via the front door, slamming it harder than necessary. A bad day. He's still damp. He stops still when he hears all the commotion. Claire appears, frantic. What's going on? Harry, I'm at my wits end here. Where have you been? You're supposed to be helping. Guests rush into the hallway. Aren't we going to do anything about Karen? Reconnected to Harry Mobile. Incoming call from Sarah Sexy Bum. Two hearts with a crossbow. Everyone is stunned into silence except Karen, who is still dying. Close on Karen, who is still making some horrific choking noises. The children cry. Ginger enters and throws up on everyone's feet. Antonio lets out a chilling laugh. Ha ha. End. Credits.